Bless the Lord, I'd like to welcome you all to another new Sunday, first Sunday here at the Mother Church of God. Those who are in house, those who are streaming through Facebook or YouTube, I welcome you and I pray that you will be blessed. Bless the Lord. Worship, oh my soul, there is a higher place of praise. My heart is open, I lift my voice. There is a higher place of praise to the story of Oh, my God. 
Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be loved of the Lord today? Amen. Okay, so we're going to sing this song. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. And if you're happy, just post a dance and just sing and just giggle your all this morning. Bless the Lord. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice.
magnify you, O God. We praise you. And we glorify Bless the Lord. Your name. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one of
children, stand in the presence of God. Bless the Lord. And it reads thus, O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all of the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among his all people. For the Lord is great and great to be praised. He is to be heard above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and might his majesty are before me. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kingdoms, and the people Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord glory to the Lord to say, bring an offering and call him to his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him, fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the word also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Let the fields be joyful, and all that is there. Then shall all our trees of the wood rejoice. Verse 19, Before the Lord, for all the earth, for all the coming to judge the earth, he shall judge the world with righteousness, and the people with his truth. Here is a portion of God over the honor by saying, Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now in the shadow, were without him. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. We are now at the welcome and the notices of my our bishop. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless God. Bless God. He brought me out of the mighty clay. He blessed my feet on a rock to stay. And he put a song in my heart.
obedient to it and to just follow him. Because God not going to leave us nor forsake us, you know. When he give us an assignment, he's not going to leave us nor forsake us, you know. He's right beside us, he's in front of us, he's behind us, he's well giving us. God will never leave you nor forsake you. So brethren, I'm encouraging you. Do not ever feel alone because God is with you. You see him right in your seat, right? He's right there beside you, behind you, before you and within you. And it goes for all of us. So brethren, be encouraged and I'm looking forward to the rest of the service. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Smith, as you share your testimony and we continue to give God thanks for you and just encourage you as you journey on in your studies. Praise God. Amen. I also want to announce that we have with us Monique Gordon and her son. I'm going to ask them to stand. Amen. Give her a big round of applause. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Monique. Happy birthday to you. And may the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. Happy birthday to you. Sister Rasha, please make your friend feel welcome today. Amen. Bless the Lord. And I know you take her by surprise. <laughs> Bless the Lord. We're thankful that you're here. And we trust that you'll enjoy the rest of the service with us. Amen. Praise God. By way of prayer request, Sister Hyacinth, Hyacinth's brother, who has suffered a major stroke, she wants us to pray for him and also for salvation for his life. Also, we want to pray for Reverend Joy Williams' cousin, or oh, actually her cousin, her cousin's baby, he doesn't have a working kidney. What a situation. One was made available, so they need prayer that his body will be receptive to this kidney that has been um, donated. So we want to remember this baby in our prayers today. God is our healer. You know, he can do so much in our lives as we make ourselves available to him. And you realize there are so much conditions that are happening around us. Just in the week that passed, I sent out a notice for us to pray for our baby at Hall's Delight. So the children are coming out with effects and different conditions. But our God is a healer. And we trust in him. And we're not going to put any limit on our God. We're going to continue to press into him and trust him. He has been a healer in the past. He'll be a healer for us today. And he'll be a healer for us tomorrow. And so many of us, we want to put our faith in the doctors. We want to put our faith in medication. But I want to let you know it's only through Jesus that we can have health and survive the different challenges that are coming at us. It's the plan of the enemy to destroy us, you know. God's promise is that he will shut up all things that we will prosper and be good health. So the enemy's plan is to attack our health. And so as a church, we continue to cover our people and just ask God to keep us safe as we go through from day to day. God bless you. I want to also mention uh, for this week, we will be having um, our soup kitchen on Thursday, Bible study on Thursday evening. We will also be having a conference on Saturday morning. Ah, this is being hosted by Reverend French, and I don't want to. I want to do, let her speak on the conference so that for those who do not know what's happening, we'll get a chance to see and hear, and you can pledge your support as God has birthed this, this, this ministry in Reverend French, and I'll allow her to share on that. Praise God, and also on Saturday at 4 p.m. we have our children ministry. Yesterday we had about five persons, and we are praying that God will bring out more of the young people that we can nurture them and teach them the word of God so that they can be strengthened and, you know, their spiritual man can be built in such a time. Amen, amen. And so, uh, Brother Raj and Sister Rochelle, wherever you can assist in this conference, we're going to need your support. We're going to need musicians. 
Yes, Brother Kimar will be available, so we're going to work on that. Amen. And so we want you to be praying for this conference that it will be a success. I may not be able to give a hundred percent, but I'm certainly there in spirit and doing my best to see that it is a success. So over to you, Rev, as you come and share with us about the conference. God bless you as we continue to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as we go through this day. Rev, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. wonderful people and there is an anointing in the place this morning. Hallelujah! Praise God, bless God and God is working in the lives of his people. You know that God holds in his heart a very special place for women. Did you know that? God loves all people but he has a special spot for women. So last year God spoke to me in 2019 and it was an awesome visit I was at work in my office and the Lord just, it, it just came, it burst through, you know, those, uh, the, 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 the doors and the walls and he came and he spoke to me several things. But one of the things he said was that I should lift up broken women and help them to pick up the fragments of their lives and scrape up the pieces. And I really didn't understand how to do that. But last year, um, about this time, the Lord would have it that uh, I started a WhatsApp group with these uh, to start this work and minister. Young is very instrumental in that because she was the one who said, you know, that we could start right here at Model. And we started with about four persons and it has grown to over 40. And so uh, God wants to do even more work as the prophecy had come for that ministry. And so on Saturday, we will launch this group. We will launch it. We will, you know, cause more others to see that what God is doing in the lives of women, that he wants to pick up those pieces that have been broken off their lives. And I wonder why God would have given me that, you know, that ministry. You know, as I still go through my own brokenness, but I realize that God is not waiting you know, until you are fully out of the woods to use you, he wants to use you right now. Because there are others who can benefit. There are others who you can influence. And so this Saturday at 10 a.m., we will begin this launch and we will have testimonies. We will have the word being spoken as I, you know, just give the vision and mission of the group and just share what the Lord is speaking to those who would gather. The group is called Broken But Blessed. And indeed, a lot of women have been broken, but we are still beautiful and blessed. And so this Saturday, I invite you to come out. It's going to be right here at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we are planning to stream online. So those who are who can't make it to the physical location and we, we are still under orders in terms of numbers, so we welcome you to join us online. I really want to say thank you to you, Bishop Williams, for really giving your support and your blessing on this ministry and for allowing us to, to host, you know, for you to be the host or for us to host it right here at the church. That is a good sign that Bishop Williams is about the women and their experiences. So I invite you to come out, share the word, spread the word, um, bring others with you, tell them about the group, you know, those who are suffering, those who are broken, those who are fragmented, their lives have been splintered out. Tell them that there is healing at the potter's house. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited. I call like a Saturday. It's not a boring thing, you know, brethren. So come along and see what God is doing. Yes, see what God is doing. Sign language, dance, all of that. Right here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, this ministry is very Trust me. Tell me a lot. When I listen 
to the women who are struggling now, they are suffering now, they are going to. We say, but me not go to my man. God, you know, we, me not go to my we can still go and serve God and stop and pity party and say, why me? Because people are going to suffer more than me. Bless God, hallelujah. But God is good, brethren. And we want to just continue to pray one for another and help each other make it home. Praise God. We all know at that special and important part where we give back a portion to God what he has blessed us with. And so we have ushers to come now as we take up the day's offering. Praise God. Praise God. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise God. And as we take up the day's offering, we pray that God will just have his way. Father in heaven, we thank you for all that you have given us. We thank you that you have given us strength to work. We thank you for the jobs that you have blessed us with. And we pray, God, that you will continue to keep us and give us, oh God, the function to function. Father, we give back to you that which you have blessed us with. And pray even now that you will sanctify, that you will cause, Lord God, to increase. As we give the willing heart, we pray, God, that even now you will cause the caterpillar, the camper worm, and the camper worm to be destroyed. We pray, God, that you will restrain every devouring spirit. Cause Lord God increase, accept our borders, Father. Bless those who stretch for their hands to give. Provide for those who don't have to give today that they will in turn give back a portion to you when they are received. Father, just accept it even now as we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. And this, before I do the song, we're going to sing Jesus Love the Little Jesus Love the Little Children and the children will go over for Sunday school. Jesus loves the little children. All of the children of the world.
we now invite to the sacred podium our bishop as he delivers the word that God has given him to release to his congregation. Bishop Williams, Bishop Williams congregation. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Minister Young. Give God a praise. Give him a best worship today. The blood still has power to be praised. Hallelujah. I mean, we can find the deliverance. We can find the answer today in the blood. The blood is the remedy. Hallelujah. Even now we plead the blood of Jesus in this atmosphere. Yes, Lord, we want to receive your word and we pray that your blood will do a work on our hearts and around us even now. Remove every distraction, mighty God. Let every power be subjected to your power in the name of Jesus. And I pray that your word will go forth with clarity and that your people will be inspired, your people will be blessed, your people will be empowered through your word today. We declare it done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Glory to God. You may be seated. The blood is still close from Calvary. And the blood still has power today. Just as it did in the whole days. Praise God. Today I want to greet you again in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to give God thanks that we can come into his sanctuary. We can meet even through social media and to receive you know, the word of God and to remove, receive that nourishment that we need to carry us through the week to come. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And so we have read from Psalm 96. And I want to share on the theme, the mission of the saint. The mission of the saint. And so when we talk about salvation, many of us only look to the gospel. Because that speaks about Jesus. But here, there is a psalm that helps us to understand our mission as people who are saved by God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And this psalm is also a good one as we usher in the Christmas season. It, 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 it speaks to that. And, and, and we can read it as we reminisce on the Christmas season. But today I want us to look at this psalm that was read. And there's five things that I want to share about this psalm today. This psalm shows us how to praise God. Hallelujah. And so we can sing about him. We can tell others about him. We can worship him. We can give him glory. We can bring our offering to him as a form of worship and a form of giving to him. And also we can live holy lives before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So when we think about the psalm today, it is calling for commitment. It is calling for dedication. For us to fulfill this mission that we are on, we've got to be committed. Hallelujah. And so there's five things that comes out in the psalm that I want us to zero in on today. The first one is that we must glorify God. There's so much about us that we can glorify. You ever find when you get one new suit and you put it on, you feel so excited and everybody compliments you and you feel so good. Yes, and it brings that form of glory. But we're talking about when we recognize God in such a way. Even when we're going through a problem, you know, we still are glorified God. Because it's in those moments of giving Him glory that you, my sister, shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to praise our way through. So we must give Him glory. Verse 1 and 2 says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. So God deserves your praise. And you can praise him through your song. You can sing about his goodness. You can sing about his love. You can actually sing to God. As well as you can sing about him. Hallelujah. We can glorify him through our songs. So the songwriter says, song of praise, hallelujah. You know that songwriter has been through a rough experience, but God has delivered. And so the songwriter had a song of praise, a song of glory. And I have a song to 
today because I'm an overcomer. And I overcome today because of my word, the words of my testimony and through the blood of the Lamb. So I have a song today. Hallelujah. I have a song of praise. Hallelujah. And some of our songs express our, our experiences. And our songs, you know, will be different because as we go through our different experiences, we're going to come up with new songs. Hallelujah. That, that's why sometimes within us, a song just bursts within us. And we find ourselves singing that song over and over again. People around you are not singing that song. Because that song doesn't resonate with them. That song doesn't speak of their experience. But where you are at that time, that song brings hope. That song brings consolation. That song said to let you know that God is still with you. Hallelujah. And so you sing your song. The second point about the psalm is that we must go to declare. And so verse 3 through 6 says, Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He shall be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nation, they are what? Idols. But the Lord made the our God made the heavens. Our God is a creator. Our God is in charge. Our God is all powerful. Our God bigger than idols. Hallelujah. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. So our mission requires us not just to sing about God and sing of his love, but also to tell of who he is. Our mission, uh, we must declare God to all people. The Eden, we're talking about the ungodly. So that just when we come in church, we talk about God. Even when we act for our workplaces, even in our homes, where there are ungodly family members, we must declare God in the atmosphere that they can know that there is a sovereign God. The creator, the everlasting God, who is in charge of this world. The God who must be worshipped and the God must be served in spite of everything that we are going through. Give him another praise. We must tell of God's glory. We must share about his grace. Because his grace is sufficient to keep us in our times of need. So we need to declare the grace of God. That others will know that God's grace is important. And they can seek after his grace today. The third point about this psalm that I love is verse 7 through 9. And the last time I preached, or perhaps the second to last time, I, I preached for giving. So when this part link me, I say, God, we're going to come back again for giving. But this is the word of God. Ah, praise God. Ah, so verse 3 speaks about we must give. The third point, we must give. And verse 7 through 9 uh, says to us, give unto the Lord all ye kindred. Of the, of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. So our mission is not just about singing. It's not just about speaking and declaring. It's also, it also calls for a sacrifice. Because giving comes with a sacrifice. Sometimes when you check your purse and your wallet, there's nothing much there, but you're called to give. So you've got to make a sacrifice. What an awesome God we serve. Glory to God. Our giving must recognize the greatness of God. And so he has given to us, so we give back to him. We give him our lives. We give him our offering. We give him our time. We give him all that we have because he has been a God that has given all to us. Praise his wonderful name. And so the psalmist help us to know that we can give glory. We can give him our offerings. And the offerings here is your financial givings and gifts that you give to the Lord. Ah, and we can give him our worship. And today has been one that we 
The fourth point that comes out strongly in this psalm is the message that we ought to declare. Verse 10 and 12 says, Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice. And let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. Give God a lot of praise. So we are to declare the sovereignty of God. People must know that God is the creator. People must know that God is in charge. People must know that God is still alive and well. He's a God of judgment. He's a God of justice. He's a God of fire. And he's a, he's a consuming fire. And so if we're not at the place where we ought to be, we shall be judged by this, uh, the sovereign God. Hallelujah. He reigned forever and evermore. And this is a psalm which came before the gospel. You know? And the gospel speaks about Jesus being risen and he reigned forevermore. But here the psalmist let us know that our God reigns forevermore. He is eternal. He's from everlasting to everlasting. Praise God. And so we must declare that. We must also declare the security of God because his kingdom is sure. And he wants us to be a part of his kingdom. And we must declare that when we are in his kingdom, God will protect us. God will shelter us. God will take care of his own. We must also declare the scrutiny of God because he will judge the people righteously. Our God is a righteous judge. And more about that promise in the fifth point. So as we are thinking about our mission, people of God, the fifth point is that we have a mandate to follow. And so verse three said, uh, 13 says, Before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. So we must be prepared for the coming of the Lord. Why? Because it is certain. Notice the repetition and the emphasis. For he cometh. For he cometh. There's no two way about it. He is coming and we ought to be prepared. He is coming to judge the world and to pay every man according as his work shall be. God is a judge and his judgment comes with condition. Two conditions is that it is based on his own integrity. So he will judge the earth with righteousness. This talks about the fairness of his judgment. It talks about the accuracy of his judgment and also about the authority that he has to judge this world. The second point about the condition of his judgment is that he will judge us based on his own truth. And we will be judged based on what we did with God's truth. His truth is Jesus. He shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. What have you done with Jesus? Glory to God. God is going to judge us according to what we have done with his truth. And so in closing this morning, we have an expectation to seek for God's praise. We have a responsibility to tell others about the glory and the grace of God. We also have a responsibility to sacrificially give. Yes, give of our glory to God. Give our offering, our worship and honor to the living God. And we are to declare his sovereignty. We are to declare his security. And we are to declare the scrutiny of God. And so we also have a responsibility to follow the mandate that God has given us. Which requires us to be prepared for his coming. So after we have met all the requirements of this mission, the grand finale will be the time of judgment. Praise God. But God is that righteous judge who will know all our needs, who will be aware of every secret sins 
and he will judge us accordingly. Praise God. So on this mission, we have a responsibility to prepare for the end, which is the judgment time. And God will judge us based on his integrity and based on his truth. Let us be committed to this mission, my brothers and sisters, and be ready for the return of Jesus Christ. For Jesus, he coming, he's coming, and Jesus is coming to judge us. He will judge you, he will judge me. Let us be ready to meet him when he comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. What a lovely song. Yes. Amen. And I trust today that we will take it seriously, we will reflect on it and realize that, you know, those five points that we have, the point that we must give God glory, we must declare Him, we must give, we must, you know, we have the message that we must declare and we must follow the mandate that God has given to us. We have a number of prayer requests today and we want to lift them before the Lord and believe God for his people. Praise God. So at this time we're gonna just ask, we're gonna ask Reverend French to take these prayer requests before the Lord. Sister Powell and Sister Lorna, they have asked some prayer. I think both mentioning about pain. And Tracy Crooks in New York is also asking for prayer. And we have read about Sister Hyacinth's uh, relative, that's her brother, who suffered a major stroke, and uh, he's asking for prayer and prayer for salvation. And then uh, Reverend John Williams' cousin, the baby that is uh, to receive the kidney. So we believe in God today because He is indeed a good God, our healer and our deliverer. If there's anyone here and you have a prayer request, this is a season to tap in to you know that moment of prayer because God is here to bless. God is moving by His Spirit. He's moving in all the earth. Saints and wonders. Love. 
your children whom you have called out uh, at this time, God, in this world. You have called them to serve you. Uh, God, and I lift up Sister Powell and Sister Lorna to you. Oh, God, as they are in their twilight years. Oh, mighty God, you said, oh, God, that those who are in old age, those who are growing older, that even in their old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. And so I present them to you. I pray you take care of those uh, the, uh, painful situations, their, their, their bodies, oh God, that are of so much pain, that are debilitating, and sometimes cause them to, to be immovable. Oh, mighty God, cannot even do the chores and the things uh, that they would want to do. Lord, I pray that even now, you will visit Sister Lorna, visit Sister Powell. Oh God, they have a heart to serve you. Lord God, Jesus, we pray for Tracy Crooks. My God, with that situation, my God, there's no distance in prayer. Lord, we know that when we call you here, Lord, you have heard the cry and you know the situation already. Oh God, I pray you visit this person right now and take charge, Almighty God, of this condition. Oh, Almighty God, go into the home.
truck in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray for our brother who had to receive a mind stroke. Yes, God, we thank you for saving his life. We thank you, oh God, that the, the brain, oh God, did that shut down. Oh God, but we're praying for complete healing and deliverance for our sister Addison's brother today. We pray, God, that you will take charge of every capillary, oh God, every tissue, oh God, the entire brain, and all its functioning today. I pray.
Jesus name and we thank you for hearing our prayers today Lord as we just offer them to you we wait for the breakthrough we wait for the testimonies we wait on you for what you are already done in the, in the spirit hallelujah we wait for the manifestation in Jesus Shall we continue to bless the Lord? Praise God, praise God. We're gonna just, um, we're gonna move into our Lord's Supper. So, for those who would normally leave, you don't have to leave, because it won't be long, and then you can have your regular greetings, amen? So, I'm gonna ask the usher to do the sanitizing as we move straight into our Lord's Supper. I'm gonna ask Reverend French to read as uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 for me. Bless the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 14 through 22. Bless the Lord. And we don't have our keyboard here, so we won't be doing much singing. Amen? But of course, we will be glorifying God as we fellowship today in this supper. Praise God. And I'm going to ask ministers, um, Adams and Young, to do the serving so that we will flow. Amen, amen. So, Rev is already to read for us, so I'll just take over there after. From verse 14 through 22. Supper. 
The brethren, they overestimated its power. They thought that if they eat the bread and drink of the cup of God, then they would have pleased God. And therefore, you know, it, they would be safe from his judgment. Even if they kept going to their feast of idols and that their unbelieving friends were a part of. So they, 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 they are those among us who think that they can participate in the, uh, uh, the Lord's table to, to, to be strengthened and to be forgiven so that they can continue to live their lives however they choose. But that is the wrong concept today. Paul makes it clear that the Lord suffer itself like any other religious ritual, it does not have the power to make us right before God. We have to be right to partake. We cannot partake of the supper to make us right. Amen? So we've got to be right before we partake. And so Paul also addressed those who underestimated the power of the Lord's Supper. He makes it clear that in, um, that it is, um, it is more than just some religious rituals. And so it is something that the entire body participates in. So we will often have our leaders who help in the serving or to, to ask God's blessing on the emblems and so on. But we must realize that all of us, we are participating in the experience. Shall we praise the Lord? Every person present at the table, we participate in the blessing of the cup. Not just the person who is leading the observance. So although it might be appropriate for one person to publicly pray a prayer of thanksgiving for the cup, the cup is actually blessed by each and every one of us as an act, uh, 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 by the act of taking the cup with a heart of thanksgiving for what Jesus has done for us. So as we stretch forth our hands and we take off the cup with that heart of thanksgiving, we are blessing God. Hallelujah. And again, the idea that the breaking of the bread is not just a religious ritual done by the leader on behalf of the believers who are gathered. Each of us we bless the bread as we take and eat with a heart of thanksgiving. So today as we participate, we will be showing that we are blessing the Lord for this cup and for this bread that is coming forth. Praise God. And as we participate, we are sharing in the blessing that comes through the body and the blood of Jesus Christ which he willingly sacrificed for us on Calvary. We come to the table to eat with Jesus and to be spiritually nourished up today just as how we feed ourselves in the natural to be physically strong by eating and drinking. By faith, we are, take, we are taking into our lives the blessings that Jesus purchased on the cross of Calvary through his body and through his blood. So through that today we have forgiveness of sins, we have the removal of our guilt, and we have peace with God. That makes it possible for us to have a right relationship with him. So as believers today, we take the emblems with a heart of thanksgiving, and when we do so, it becomes a participation in the body and the blood of Jesus that will develop a deeper desire to our life for him and not to settle for idols or anything else that is not of God. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? So at this time, I'm gonna ask, um, okay, I'm gonna ask Sister Julian to ask God's blessing on the emblems and after which, I'm going to ask our two ministers to prepare to serve us in the usual way. Sister Julia.
Bless the Lord. And while our ministers serve us, we're going to do some choruses. Love, wonderful love. The love of Christ to me. Love, wonderful love. So rich, so pure, so free. Love, wonderful love. The love of Christ to me.
name Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 says to us, For I receive of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me, eat ye all of its sins. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had stopped saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do he as often as he drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he comes. Let us drink, remembering the Lord. Jesus. Father, we thank you for this experience that we have had with you today, for sharing at your table. We thank you, Lord, for those who have served us. We thank you, God, for the emblems. We thank you, God, for the shed blood. We thank you, God, for your body that was broken on Calvary. Even now, Lord, we thank you for what we will receive having shared in this exercise. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the deliverance. We thank you for the forgiveness of sin. We thank you, God, for the strengthening of our relationship with you. We thank you for the blessings that shall be meted out to us as we go through this week and beyond. We thank you, God, that you have been faithful and that you have always been with us. You promise that you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. And for that, we give you thanks. Father, just have your way even now. And as we will leave from the sanctuary, pray that your presence will go with us. Keep your people under your blood. Cover the mighty God and keep us under oh God, your covered so that the enemy will do us no harm. We seal our faith one more time in you, Lord, and we pray that you help us to go forward, oh God, to seek forth your praise, to declare your name, to share the mandate that you have given unto us and to trust you in every era of our lives, to give up of our best to you, mighty God, and to serve you wholeheartedly. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance and give you peace. God bless you as you go. Walk good and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises on.